Welcome to Wildlife O Podcast, where we learn about the most fascinating animals to have ever walked, swam, or flew the earth. Today, we're uncovering the remarkable evolution of the duck billed platypus. Stay tuned to explore this fascinating mammal and its bizarre journey through time. Let's dive in. The Remarkable Evolution of the Duck Billed Platypus. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you like the podcast to support wildlife conservation. Appearance of the Platypus The platypus is one of nature's most extraordinary animals, known for its unique appearance and surprising abilities. While many recognize the platypus as one of the few egg-laying mammals, fewer are aware of its impressive burrowing skills. In this chapter, we'll explore how the platypus uses its powerful limbs to create deep, intricate burrows, and what it means to be a monotreme. The platypus, an expert burrower. Though often seen swimming in rivers and streams, the platypus spends much of its time on land, specifically underground. Using its strong, webbed front limbs, the platypus digs extensive burrows into the banks of waterways. These burrows can be surprisingly deep, sometimes reaching up to 30 meters, about 98 feet, in length. The entrance to a platypus burrow is usually well hidden, often submerged or located just above the waterline to protect against predators. Inside, the burrow branches into multiple tunnels, including nesting chambers lined with leaves and grass. These nesting areas are where the female platypus lays her eggs and raises her young, safe from the dangers of the outside world. The Monotreme Connection The platypus isn't just any mammal. It belongs to a very rare group called monotremes. Monotremes are unique among mammals because they lay eggs instead of giving birth to living young. Today, only five species of monotremes exist, the platypus and four species of echidnas. What makes monotremes even more fascinating is that they combine reptilian and mammalian traits. Like reptiles, they lay eggs, but like mammals, they are warm-blooded, have fur, and produce milk to feed their young. In the case of the platypus, these traits come together in one of the most peculiar and captivating creatures on Earth. The importance of burrows. For the platypus, burrows are essential for survival. These underground homes provide protection from predators and harsh weather, as well as a secure environment for raising offspring. During the breeding season, the female platypus retreats into her burrow, where she will lay one to three eggs. She incubates them by curling her body around them, and after about 10 days, the eggs hatch. The newborns, tiny and helpless, remain in the burrow for several months, feeding on their mother's milk until they are strong enough to venture out on their own. Conclusion The platypus is a master digger and one of nature's most unique mammals. As a monotreme, it represents an ancient lineage, bridging the gap between reptiles and modern mammals. Its ability to dig deep, complex burrows not only highlights its physical strength, but also showcases the adaptability and resourcefulness that have allowed the platypus to thrive in its environment for millions of years. Whether underwater or underground, the platypus continues to captivate us with its remarkable blend of ancient and modern traits. In the wild, survival often hinges on the ability to detect and respond to the environment in ways that go beyond the ordinary. For the platypus, a unique and fascinating mammal native to Australia. This means using a highly specialized sense that allows it to navigate, hunt, and thrive in conditions where other creatures might struggle. In this chapter, we'll explore the remarkable electric sensors located on the platypus's bill and how they play a crucial role in its daily life. The platypus bill, a sensory marvel. At first glance, the platypus's bill might remind you of a duck's, but it is far more complex and specialized. The surface of the bill is densely packed with thousands of sensory receptors. These receptors are divided into two main types. 1. Mechanoreceptors. These detect physical changes such as pressure, texture, and movement in the water. 2. Electroreceptors. These are the true marvels, responsible for detecting electrical signals in the environment. How Electroreceptors Work all living animals generate weak electrical fields when they move their muscles or nerves. These fields are usually imperceptible, but for the platypus, they provide vital information about its surroundings. 
When the platypus hunts underwater, it closes its eyes, ears, and nose, relying solely on its bill to sense the environment. The electroreceptors embedded in the bill detect the tiny electrical signals emitted by the prey's muscle contractions. This ability allows the platypus to locate and track prey even in the darkest, murkiest waters, where sight and sound are of little use. Navigating the Underwater World The platypus's ability to detect electrical signals gives it a distinct advantage in its aquatic environment. As it glides through the water, the platypus moves its bill from side to side, scanning for the electric fields produced by potential prey. The electroreceptors send signals to the brain, which processes these inputs to create an electrical map of the surroundings. This electrical mapping is so precise that the platypus can determine not only the location of its prey, but also its size, shape, and movement. This level of sensitivity is crucial for the platypus, as it often hunts in environments where visibility is poor, such as during the night or in muddy waters. Processing the signals. Once the electroreceptors detect an electric signal, the information is relayed to the brain, where it is processed alongside inputs from the mechanoreceptors. The platypus's brain integrates these signals to produce a coherent understanding of its surroundings. This sensory fusion enables the platypus to make quick, accurate decisions about where to strike and when, ensuring its success as a predator. Now, we're going to explore something you might not expect from the platypus, its unusual sleeping patterns. The way these creatures rest is as unique as their appearance, and it's all part of what makes them so fascinating. Part 1. Sleep Cycle Overview Like all animals, platypuses need to rest, but their sleep patterns are a bit different from what we might expect. They spend a lot of time sleeping, up to 14 hours a day, but what's really interesting is how they manage this rest time. Part 2. Periods of Torpor Platypuses can enter a state called torpor, which is similar to hibernation. During torpor, their body temperature and metabolic rate drop significantly. This allows them to conserve energy, especially during colder months or when food is scarce. It's a survival strategy that helps them get through tough times. Part 3. Unique REM Sleep Another fascinating aspect of their sleep is that platypuses experience a unique form of REM, rapid eye movement, sleep. In fact, they have more REM sleep than any other animal, including humans. Scientists believe this might be linked to their highly developed brain and sensory systems, but the exact reason remains a mystery. Part 4. Adaptation to Aquatic Life The platypus's sleep patterns are also adapted to its semi-aquatic lifestyle. They tend to sleep in burrows, where they can stay warm and safe from predators. These burrows are often located near water, allowing them quick access to their hunting grounds when they wake up. Conclusion the unusual sleeping patterns of the platypus are yet another example of how this animal has adapted to its environment. From entering torpor to their unique REM sleep, the platypus continues to surprise us with its remarkable biology. These adaptations not only help them survive, but also make them one of the most interesting mammals on the planet. Now, we're diving into another truly intriguing aspect of the platypus, its ability to emit a faint glow under UV light. This mysterious trait adds another layer to the already fascinating world of the platypus. Let's learn more. 1. The Glow Phenomenon Did you know that platypuses can actually glow under UV light? It's true. When exposed to ultraviolet light, the fur of a platypus emits a subtle blue-green glow. This glow is due to the presence of certain proteins and pigments in their fur. 2. How It Happens this glowing effect is a result of fluorescence. Fluorescence occurs when a substance absorbs UV light and then re-emits it as visible light. For platypuses, their fur has compounds that absorb UV rays and then re-emit them as a faint blue-green glow. This is quite rare among mammals and adds to their unique biology. 3. Possible Functions Scientists aren't entirely sure why platypuses have this glowing trait, but there are a few theories. One possibility is that it might play a role in communication or mating displays. The glow could potentially help platypuses identify each other in the dark, though this is still under investigation. Now, 
We'll travel back in time to uncover the ancient history of one of Earth's most unique mammals, the platypus. Let's dig into the fossil records to see how this fascinating creature has evolved over millions of years. Part 1. Ancient Origins The story of the platypus begins millions of years ago. Fossil evidence shows that the platypus is part of an ancient group of early mammals known as monotremes. These mammals are some of the most primitive still alive today, offering us a glimpse into the distant past. Part 2. Significant Fossil Discoveries One of the key fossil finds is that of Obdurodon, an extinct ancestor of the modern platypus. Unlike today's platypus, Obdurodon had fully developed teeth and was much larger. These fossils were unearthed in Australia, helping scientists piece together how these early platypuses lived and evolved. Part 3. Evolutionary Adaptations Over time, the platypus evolved several unique adaptations. The modern platypus has lost its teeth and developed a specialized bill, perfectly suited for hunting in rivers and streams. The fossil record shows a gradual transition from a more terrestrial lifestyle to the semi-aquatic one we see today. Part 4. The Living Fossil Because of its mix of ancient and modern traits, the platypus is often called a living fossil. It retains characteristics that were common in early mammals, providing a living link to the distant past. This makes the platypus an important subject of study for scientists interested in mammalian evolution. Conclusion The fossil records of the platypus paint a picture of a remarkable evolutionary journey. From its ancient ancestors to the present-day species, the platypus is a living testament to the wonders of evolution. Understanding this history deepens our appreciation for this incredible animal and highlights the importance of conserving its habitat. The platypus is a unique mammal, not only due to its distinctive appearance, but also because of its fascinating reproductive methods. As one of the few monotremes, the platypus has some of the most unusual reproductive strategies in the animal kingdom. In this chapter, we will explore how the platypus reproduces, from courtship to egg-laying and the care of its young. Courtship and mating Platypuses are generally solitary animals, but during the breeding season, which typically occurs from June to October, males and females come together. Courtship involves elaborate behaviors, including vocalizations and physical displays. Males may engage in wrestling matches to establish dominance and attract a mate. Once a pair has formed, mating takes place in the water. The male platypus has a spur on its hind legs that can deliver a venomous sting, used primarily for defense and competition with other males rather than directly during mating. Egg-laying After mating, the female platypus prepares for egg-laying. She constructs a burrow with a nesting chamber lined with soft materials like leaves and grass. The burrow is usually situated near water providing both protection and easy access to food. In the late spring or early summer, the female lays one to three eggs. The eggs are leathery, not hard like those of birds, and are incubated in the burrow. The female curls around the eggs to keep them warm, maintaining a stable temperature for successful development. Incubation and hatching. The incubation period lasts about 10 days. During this time, the female rarely leaves the burrow, relying on stored fat reserves for nourishment. After the eggs hatch, the mother continues to care for the tiny, helpless young. These newborn platypuses, known as puggles, are born blind, hairless, and extremely vulnerable. Nursing and growth. The mother platypus produces milk to feed her young. Unlike most mammals, she does not have nipples. Instead, the milk is secreted through pores in the skin. The puggles lap up the milk from the mother's fur. Nursing lasts for about three to four months, during which the young grow rapidly and begin to develop their own fur. As they mature, the young gradually start to explore outside the burrow under the watchful eye of their mother. By the time they are about four to five months old, they are ready to fend for themselves and leave the safety of the burrow. Conclusion The reproductive methods of the platypus are a testament to the diversity of life on Earth. From the unique egg-laying process to the care of the young, the platypus's reproductive strategies highlight its status as a monotreme and its adaptation to its environment. 
Understanding these methods not only adds to our appreciation of this remarkable animal, but also underscores the importance of conserving its habitat to ensure the survival of future generations. The platypus is one of the most remarkable animals on the planet, with its mix of mammalian and reptilian features and its unique reproductive methods. However, despite its fascinating biology, the platypus faces various conservation challenges. This chapter explores the current conservation status of the platypus and the efforts underway to ensure its continued survival. Conservation Status As of the most recent assessments, the platypus is classified as a near-threatened species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN. This status indicates that while the platypus is not yet endangered, it is at risk of becoming so if current threats are not addressed. Several factors contribute to this classification. 1. Habitat loss. Urban development and agriculture have led to significant habitat loss for the platypus. The destruction of riparian zones, areas along watercourses, impacts the availability of suitable burrowing sites and clean water sources. 2. Water pollution. The quality of water in many of the platypus's habitats has deteriorated due to pollution from agricultural runoff industrial discharges, and other contaminants. Polluted water can affect the health of the platypus and reduce the abundance of prey. 3. Climate change. Changes in climate patterns can alter the distribution and availability of water resources, impacting the platypus's habitat. Extreme weather events, such as floods and droughts, also pose threats to their survival. 4. Predation by non-native species. In some areas, Non-native predators, such as feral cats and dogs, pose a threat to young platypuses and their eggs. Conservation Efforts To address these challenges, several conservation initiatives are in place. 1. Habitat Protection and Restoration Conservation organizations and governments are working to protect and restore natural habitats along waterways. Efforts include reforestation, controlling erosion, and maintaining water quality. 2. Monitoring and research. Ongoing research aims to better understand the platypus's ecology, population dynamics, and threats. Monitoring programs help track population trends and assess the effectiveness of conservation measures. 3. Pollution management. Efforts are being made to reduce pollution and improve water quality in platypus habitats. This includes stricter regulations on agricultural runoff, and improved waste management practices. 4. Public awareness and education. Raising awareness about the platypus and its conservation needs is crucial. Educational programs and campaigns help inform the public about the species and promote support for conservation efforts. 5. Protective legislation. In Australia, the platypus is protected under various environmental laws which regulate land use and provide legal safeguards against activities that could harm its habitat. Conclusion The platypus is a living treasure of Australia's wildlife, but its future is not guaranteed without concerted conservation efforts. By protecting its habitat, managing pollution, and supporting research and education, we can help ensure that this extraordinary species continues to thrive. The platypus serves as a reminder of the delicate balance of ecosystems, and the importance of preserving the unique creatures that share our world. Thanks for tuning in to today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to share and subscribe to support wildlife conservation. See you next time.